Okay, they say the third time's the charm of this, so... <laughs> I've recorded this, and it screwed up, the audio ended up duplicated, echoed, and so I'm starting this again, and hopefully I won't make the mistakes I did last time. So, I'm sitting on live, I'm just recording some of the stuff that's changed in 104 now, because 104 104's just gone live around about 10 minutes ago, um, and it's fixing a whole bunch of problems and bits and pieces like that, so... Um, I also want to show you some of the new stuff. So one of the new things that was added in was that um, sometimes you've got these macros like this one. I've got this one, beware. Um, and if a macro name has changed, a sequence name has changed, there's nothing underneath the button. What ends up happening is you're sitting there, you're pushing the thing, nothing's occurring. It's not throwing me into combat or anything like that. So I've added an option called uh, GS Clean Orphans. So this will go through, it's gone, deleted macro beware, so if I reopen the macro window, that one's gone, the button I just dragged onto the window is gone. It's just in case something's lost, you're sitting there pressing buttons going, what's going on? A clean macro, uh, a clean orphans will basically clean up anything that's been left behind. So, moving on from that, the stuff that I really wanted to look at was, um, people have been asking, what's the best way to save macros and files in game? So if I switch across back to my editor, um, I've got these folders. So I've got GS Core, GS Drake's macros, GS High Performance macros. I'll talk about that at the end. GS My Macros and the Sequence Editor. When you turn around and um, when you download the game from Curse, you get these three. Oh, not that one. You get these three. Um, they're loaded in. The high performance macros and the my macros, these are plugins for extra macro packs that are being created around the place. Same as like Drake's macros is a macro pack. So it's not something you have to run in game. You could turn around and not use Drake's macros. You could do your own or a combination of a bit from here, a bit from there, a bit of your own. Um, but one of the prob one of the things that happened with the original GNOME sequencer and one of the reasons why I went down this path was that um, you'd end up having to, in the original GNOME sequencer, you'd go into this core folder and you would create a file called sequences.lua. Um, now my mouse is behaving awesomely. That's fantastic. Um, it's always great when you're doing stuff live with Windows and Windows just breaks it all and it all disappears. Um, so, let's see if we can get this back. All right, we've solved our Windows problem. Okay, so what you would normally, what you'd had to do in the old days is you'd take this file, example sequences, you'd copy it, you'd paste it, and you'd rename it to sequences.lua. Then you'd open up this file, and you would edit it and change it and put all your sequences in. And um, some guys ended up with a sequences LUA file that was 150, 180 odd macros in it. It was yeah, bigger than Ben Hur and whatever else. Um, but what the problem is is that if the original GNOME sequence was updated, um, you had to come back in and merge your changes with this, and it would do weird stuff. All right, so I'm just going to delete that file so it doesn't do weird stuff for me. Um, but so I split this up into my macros and core. Um, Part of the reason for doing that was that stuff was so that, okay, well, I want to be able to maintain the add-on. I don't want to have to worry about what happens to my macros. But people have gone, okay, you've bundled these ones in. I've opened Drake macros up. I've edited them. I got them right. You've done an update, and it's written over the top. So what I've got is there's this other add-on. You can find it on Curse, and you can find it on WoW Interface. You can find a link to it from the GNOME Sequencer page. Sorry, the GNOME Sequencer Enhanced page called GS My Macros. This is literally a blank shell that you can put your own stuff in, and it doesn't matter what happens to GS Drake macros or GS Core or the sequence editor, your stuff will always be intact and saved. And so I'm just going to go through how to actually use this. Now, so if I switch back to in-game, so I do a GSSE, um, I'm just going to load a sequence at random. I'll, I'll take one of my rep ones because I'm a paladin. All right, so I've got the sequence. Go edit. Um, this was just added in, in in 103, is these two buttons here. So special specific macros. This is what you normally used to where spec ID equals 70 for Red Pally. But you can change this to be a class-wide macro. 
and say we wanted to have um, and where's my spell book um, somebody asked about how I do this I'm just dragging and dropping I'm not doing a, a cast so that's just a drag and drop what I'm not doing I'm not doing like a shift click or a control click I'm not doing one of those they don't work, I'm just doing a drag, drop, cast. Oop, case, cast. So I want it to say the dead are alive and then cast redemption. And I want that to be available for all of my things. I want it to be available if I'm prot, if I'm ret, if I'm holy. I want to be able to use that one macro in like that. So I go close and it creates this macro, this sequence. Now, if I go copy, right, I go back out of the game. So say I've tested it, it's worked, I'm happy, right? Um, I go back out of the game, I go back into my text editor. Now, if I'm using Notepad, and here's my Notepad window that I prepared earlier, if I just go paste from Notepad, what'll happen is it comes up on one line, right? It's not readable, it doesn't make sense. Um, all the post macro stuff here is broken because of the, just the way it all it lost all the new lines and whatever else. This is a notepad limitation. Um, if you're doing anything seriously, I'd strongly suggest you get one or two things. You either get uh, Notepad++ or Atom.io. So we're going to use Atom in a couple of seconds, and Atom has some really cool functions and features. Um, that's not knocking Notepad++. It's what works. It's just don't use Notepad. right? Um, so if I go back to my folder... So, uh, right click, open with Adam. You can't see my pop up menu because for some reason XSplit doesn't want to actually show that. But, so, but what Adam looks like is it looks like this. So you see I've got my Drake macro stuff up here and I've got my macros. I've got my palette and one open. If I go paste, it's come up, all the lines are intact, they're behaving the way it should. Um, I can change the sequence name to get up. I'll take the exclamation mark out. I'll just call it get up. So author, like I can change the help test text because talents don't really matter for a class wide macro. All right. So. Pre-macro, I pretty much could have changed it. I don't really need it for this particular one. Um, I've got my spell icon that I can change by picking up any spell icon and going, oh, I want that one. Um, post-macro, well, I don't even need a post-macro on this one either, so I'll take that out just because I can. But So I've got my, my super, super, super simple res macro. Control save. All right. If when I come back to the game... So if I do a slash GS, it's popping up live test because I was just working on it. It's got ret AOE and it's got DB ret. And it's got all those bits like the talents, who contributed it, what's it about, that kind of stuff. So you notice live test doesn't have a class or a spec. It's just got contributed by me. Um, that's because it's, it's sitting as a global. It doesn't really, it hasn't picked all that stuff, fun stuff up yet. But if I do a console reload UI... This will now load that Paladin macro, that res one that I put in my macros, and it'll load it because interface, add-ons. So I've got my macros is loaded. This is a blank sequence adding pack shell that can be used to create a new pack or store your local macros in. All right, so um, add-ons. All right, so there it is there. So because that's there, when I now do a GS, it's added in get up. Right. It's, it's put the retribution icon because I didn't change it in the sequence file. But it's gone, great, I've got this one button that'll do the stuff. If I drag it down, it says the dead are alive. And it's tried to cast resurrection, but because I don't have a dead thing attached to it, it's not working. Um, it's not actually casting res because there's nothing to cast it on. But that, that particular one, if I delete it... Um, and I change from retribution to holy or protection. Um, and then I do a GS again. All right, it still turns around and tells me get up. So if I close the macro window because I left it open, 
Right. I've now got the prot pally one that wasn't there earlier and get ups back again. And it's the exact same macro that was. So it's basically there for the class. Alrighty, so that's all well and good, but if I go to GSSE, what I've got is I've got this list and list and list and that list all the db ones are the ones that are in drake's macros and they get bigger and there's more of them and stuff um how do i manage that how do i deal with that well there's a couple of ways you can do it you can turn around and take the ones you want and put them into my sequences um and then you don't have to load the db macros all right so i'm just going to change back to retribution for a sec once that's finished so if i go back to my add-on list, I can turn around and take Drake's bonds and turn it off and say, I don't want them. I've got the stuff in my macros. I've got another macro pack that somebody's created. Like there's one for, there's a Russian translation I know of, and there's a couple of others that are starting to crop up. Um, I don't need the Drake's ones anymore. I've moved on to bigger and better things. I go reload UI. And these buttons now, they won't work because they're just shells and stubs. So I do my GS clean orphans. And it says it got rid of that one. Run it again. Uh, for some reason, it's still leaving my ret one, which is just great. But I go into my macro pack. The GS ones, yeah, all those. The other ones, like the the ret and the ret AOE and the prop one, they're not there because they're part of the Drake's pack and they're gone. Um, I will figure out why this one doesn't delete later on. It's always fun when you find new problems. But um, yeah, so I, I don't have to have that. So I mentioned right at the beginning, I talked about this high performance one. So this pack won't be ready till about September. And it won't be ready till about mid-September because by that time, this, is, this isn't this is like a bunch of, this won't be a bunch of one button wins. This will be a separate add-on that you can grab and download and install. And it'll have things that, it's going to take you time. You're going to need time to you know, you're going to need time to work through the macros. You're going to need to tweak them. You're going to need to change them. You're going to need time to figure out how to get the best out of them. They're they're for min maxes. They're for people that want to play at a high end and they really want top stuff. They don't want just one button that you know, does good stuff. They want stuff that's great and they're prepared to invest the time to figure out their keybinds and their their alts and their shifts and their mods and bits to figure out how to get exactly the best out of their character. Now, in order to qualify for one of these macros, so these will all begin in game with a HP. So if I bring up the editor, just so it's got a list of them, you've got these ones BM1. So there's some Beast Mastery ones at the moment, like there's an oh shit, a look dead, you know, raiding, Beast Mastering AoE, raiding, Beast Mastering main. Um, to get the most out of these, like HP, BM burst, you really need to spend a lot of time with a target dummy to figure out how they work, how you're going to use them, how to manage them. But... In order for them to qualify like this with a HP tag, they need to be submitted to whalelazymacros.com. They need to be nominated by somebody other than the author. And then you need a consensus from people saying, yes, these actually are HP macros. These aren't just your normal run-of-the-mill stuff. These are that. And it's it's literally the, they're ones that are specified by the community as the community. Yeah, people that write macros confirming, yes, these are the good, these are it in a bit. Um so you can't get that at the moment. The only place you can get even this version that's got these ones on it is if you go to the GitHub page that, for the project and, and download it directly. Um, and the only place I'm putting a link to that too is in Wow um, Wow Lazy Macros because it's literally it's to it's I'm trying to this is a community thing. This is not a, a me thing. This is trying to get stuff in and get it happening and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, the only other thing I want to have a look at is um, there was a problem with people that were going slash GS and they couldn't press the enter key and it was hanging. I want to show you how to what was causing that problem and also what we've done to fix it. So if I go back to the editor, um, in the in the in the days where GNOME Sequencer came from, uh, these lines, these three, spec ID, help texts, and author, these didn't exist. So it was literally you had your sequence and you had your stuff. Um, but all the GSE stuff, all the enhanced stuff that's in GNOME Sequencer Enhanced, depends on those three bits of data to actually tell it how to do stuff. So what would happen is if you had a sequence, so I'll go and grab one that's a little bit more um, meaningful. I'll grab like this one. This is done by Flash Greer for Arcade Mages. Um, 
But if you had this sequence, and we'll take the DB off so that we can actually find it. Right. But if you take these three lines out, and you had a sequence that looked like that, it was like somebody's done it for classic GNOME sequencer, and save it. So I'm saving it. This is in the, in the My Macros version. So if I reload it, what was happening is when people did a GS, instead of it coming up arc fix me incomplete sequence definition, the sequence is no further information, unknown author, it was trying to figure out what's the author ID, what's the spec ID, and it was getting hung and stuck, and that's why you couldn't press enter. So what it'll do now is it'll spit out this. Now, this sequence will work because the core of stuff knows how to use this, but in order to make this happen, you actually have to turn around and go create a new macro, and it's old arc school, or all old school GNOME sequencer stuff. So it's all the manual stuff. You can't, it's not going to turn around and just work out of the box. It's still, once you've done the, the making and stuff, you can still drag it down to your bar and use it. I mean, I'm not an arcane mage, so this is not really going to work on my paladin. But um, that's, that's what was causing it, that's what it was there for. But... If you don't turn around and have like the author, the spec, or the class ID, and like any of the help text, the enhanced stuff in GNOME Sequencer Enhanced doesn't really know what to do with it. Now, you can turn around and have that stuff in a GSE macro and put it in GS, and it'll work. It's not going to break anything in GS. It's just it was breaking if it wasn't there the other way around, but we've put some stuff in to basically say, look, this is here. It arc fix me. It's there. It's an incomplete sequence definition. We don't really know what to do with it. I don't know if it's a class one. I don't know if it's a general one. I don't know if it's for this class. I don't even know if it's the, the spells are available. It's just it's there. You, you've put it there. You've put it in your own stuff. Um, hope it works. The other problem that people were getting was the name wasn't in, like, um, if I go back to the sequence. And, like, so things like that, the... Other problems we found was like the name was like this. Um, that was turning around and reporting an error and breaking stuff, or the spec ID was in quotes. Those those kind of simple things were causing those problems where you'd hit slash GS and nothing would happen. So that's all been fixed in 103 and 104. 104's out as about 15, 20 minutes ago. And just hope you have fun and we'll see you in game. Bye.